Good morning. Welcome this morning. Welcome. Welcome. Okay. Welcome to each and every one of you. It is such a blessing to be once again in the house of the Lord. He is here with us and, hope and angels are here. Amen. And this morning we are going to raise our voices in songs to him. So we're going to ask you to sing with us as our first praise song will be standing on the promises of Christ my King. Standing on the promises of Christ my King Through eternal ages let His praises ring Glory in the highest I will shout and sing Standing on the promises of God Can our children come up here? And we're going to sing with them today. The wise man built his house upon the rock. Are you ready to sing? Come on up. Sweet. 
understand The foolish man built his house upon the sand The foolish man built his house upon the sand And the rain came tearing down The rain came down and the floods came up The rain came down and the floods came up The rain came down and the floods came up So build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. So build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. And the blessings will come down, down. The blessings come down and the praise goes up. The blessings come down and the praise go up. this time we're going to ask the congregation to stand and remain standing please our song will come thou fount of every blessing tune our hearts to sing thy grace and let us sing together i want to hear you guys okay all right from the fount of every blessing to my heart to sing thy grace Streams of mercy never ceasing Call for songs of loudest praise Never to adore thee Song of the mother Wait, oh, we need to start over. Let's start over Song is song three thirty three. My Ebenezer, hither by thy help I come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus taught me when a stranger wandering from the Me from danger, interpose his precious blood. Oh, to grace a greater debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy grace go like a fetter by me.
standing the Lord is in holy temple and standing for the opening song. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord is in his holy temple.
Let us bow our heads for the invocation. Father in heaven, we thank you, dear Lord, that we can be here today. We thank you for your blessings to us. We thank you for bringing us through this week. We thank you for protecting us from the storm. And Lord, we thank you also for uh, the Sabbath day in which we can come and worship you, that we can appreciate your peace and your rest and remember what a wonderful God you are. Lord, we pray now that you will bless us in this service. May we feel your power. May we feel your Holy Spirit guide and direct in all that we do today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Please be seated. It's good to see you here today. Hopefully everybody's doing well. Did you have a good week? We had that little interruption on Thursday. But thank God, didn't do much to us over no. here. But some but people still... are suffering. There's a lot of people out there, especially on the West Coast. A lot of soar, storm surge and flooding. And, uh, and, and then, of course, up in the Big Bend area, it's really been uh, uh, rough up there. I saw some pictures of some of the devastation there. Fortunately, in that area, there's not a lot of population. But still... Uh, I, I know Cedar Key. I've been in the Cedar Key area. I used to live in Ocala area. And uh, very sad. Uh, uh, houses are flattened. A lot of flooding. All kinds of terrible things. And the worst thing about that storm is it went up into Georgia and North Carolina and South Carolina. And I think they got a lot worse effects there than we did here. Just uh, Even Atlanta. They had water in the streets and flooding. A lot of roads closed. So uh, we can be thankful that God was with us and God blessed us. And, he, and it wasn't as bad as they were thinking it might be. All right. So we just want to uh, mention a couple of things here today. We want to mention, first of all, that uh, we have uh, a transfer of membership. Now, I don't know. The ladies aren't here today. If we should wait till they come back, what do you think? I think they've been waiting a while. We've been waiting a while on that. Yeah. So um, it's uh, Gwen and uh, and Gina. Uh, they have been attending here for a while, over a year or more. And uh, I think at one time, at least one of them used to be a member here from what I've been told Gwen. Gwen yeah and she was actually the church treasurer they said at one time mm -hmm. so we are so glad that they're coming back home and going to be joining us now officially so uh, it's uh, uh, Gina Downs and Gwen what is Gwen's last name Rossi that's right that's right that's right okay so is there a motion that we accept them as members into our church? All right. Is there a second? All in favor say aye. aye. Good, good, good. So we'll have to give them an extra special welcome when they come back. I guess they're out of town. A lot of people out of town today. Half the church is out of town. I don't know where, what the big deal is. I don't think they all went to the same place, though. <laughs> they went all over the place. So, uh, great when they come back. that's right, that's right, that's right. And some of them, uh, there are some people we do, I just will mention this real quickly. We do want to remember some uh, people in prayer. Uh, Shirley had to go to the hospital this morning. Uh, Shirley Wolf, uh, she was having um, shortness of breath. And so Ben isn't here, Shirley's not here. And, of course, we have some people that are traveling. And my son was having serious problems this morning, too. So he wasn't able to come. And so uh, just keep all these people in our prayers. When we have our prayer time, we'll think about them. We also want to mention, of course, that we have our potluck right after church. We want to invite everybody to stay by for that, especially our visitors. Uh, we would like to get better acquainted with you. And then we have our prayer meeting on Wednesday. And so join us uh, for prayer meeting. We're having a great time. We've had good, pretty good attendance. Uh, this last week wasn't as much as the week before, but it wasn't bad. I think the first week I was back from vacation, 
we had like 15 or 16 people here. So that was great. That's counting Don and Nathan online. But uh, you can join online. It's always available. So uh, you just come and, and enjoy us. We're studying the book, uh, Journey to the Heart of God by um, Joseph Kidder. It's a great book. A lot, of, a lot of good information there. And we also want to mention, I, I want to mention that I'm going to be gone this coming week uh, to the Southern Union Pastors Conference. That's going to be over in Orlando. Um, I will be gone starting on Sunday, and I'll be gone through Thursday. Uh, but we will have prayer meeting, just like normal. And uh, you guys, you know, I know when I wasn't here for vacation, from what I understand, there was good, uh, good attendance at prayer meeting, and people kept plowing ahead through the book. So we, you can continue to do that while I'm gone. All right. So, we want to mention too, is there any visitors today? Anybody here for the first time? You never came before? Yes. A brother there, what's your name again? Will? Wendell. Wendell. I knew it started with a W. <laughs> uh, Wendell is here from New Mexico. Amen. Uh, so, uh, that's a place that's dear to my heart. I spent about uh, five, six years working in New Mexico many years ago uh, when I was first starting out in the ministry. And so uh, we're glad that he's with us. He's fortunately just going to be here with us one day, one week. But we're glad you're here. And uh, is there anybody else that's here for the first time? I'm looking around. Uh, I don't, I don't think so. So, um, but you know, even if you're not here for the first time, we still love you. In fact, it's you people that are here every week that keep everything going. So we're, we're glad to see you, everybody here. And uh, we also want to mention uh, that you can start filling out your prayer cards now. There is a card in the pew in front of you. And uh, you can mark uh, on there um, any prayer request that you would like to share with us. And also on the back of the card, if there's any special needs that you want to share like if you'd like somebody to come and visit you or pray with you uh, if you'd like to have prayer for healing um, we do that uh, in fact a couple of weeks ago we did have a, an anointing service for someone and so we're always glad to do that also we are glad if you're interested in taking bible studies or joining the church if you're not yet a member of the church uh, we can uh uh, make arrangements for that. If you're baptized, we can make arrangements for that. And also, if you want to transfer your membership, just like uh, Gwen and, uh, and um, uh, Jenny did. So, in fact, the first time uh, that, well, the, put it this way, they marked on a prayer card they wanted to transfer their membership. And that's how that ball got rolling. And we just took them in as members today. So if you would like to join our church, don't be afraid to put it down. We do follow up with the prayer cards. We pray over them after the service every week. And we pray for all the people at prayer meeting as well. Uh, so uh, uh, anything you want to communicate with us, put that down. And we want to also welcome the people that are watching online. Uh, we know there are a number of people watching online. Uh, my name is uh, Dan Schiffbauer. I'm the pastor here. And my email is dwschiff at msn.com. Phone is 407-274-7303. And so, um, again, uh, if you are watching online, again, same thing. If you have any special needs, uh, just contact me. We would be glad to, to get acquainted with you. And if you ever have a chance, if you live in the area, uh, we encourage you to come to church in person. I think there's always a better blessing when you're here with the other brothers and sisters of the church than when you're just at home all by yourself. And so uh, come and join us if you're watching online. All right, I think that's everything for our announcement. Let's take a moment to welcome everybody to church. Welcome everybody to church. Pardon me? We'll do that after the welcome. Yeah, yeah, we'll do the welcome first, okay? Everybody, uh, a handshake. Or a
rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made, so we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. morning and uh, we also want to do a special uh, prayer of dedication for our teachers we hadn't been able to do that I was on vacation and then uh, just different things seem like uh, got in the way but we do want to do that because we appreciate our teachers at our school so I'm going to invite the Fernanda do you want to come up at this point and she's going to tell us a little report on what's happening at the school been invited to some programs where you know we get to promote our school and have our numbers go up for enrollment um, so but I wanted to um, let you know a little bit of what's happening this new school year how it's been going and the new things that we'll be doing in our school so one of the things that uh, we decided to move forward with is um, a great program which is robotics that our new teacher, Mr. Roy, has been taken over, and it's a great program, and I actually wanted to invite him up here just to say a little bit about robotics and what it is that we, we plan on doing. Good morning. Um, in robotics, we're learning about the ocean. We're, um, the K to three kids are building a little um, submersible and going to be studying the ocean and learning about it. And the bigger kids are doing the um, robotics on that too, but goes a little deeper and they'll have to do a presentation. And then we will go and see how well our team does at the event in Orlando in the spring. And the kids just get to find out that there's a lot more to Legos than just playing. There's a whole lesson behind it and what they're learning. Thank you. So yes, we plan on having a trip and having the students compete next school year. So it's a great way to have our students out there and doing some critical thinking. Um, another amazing um, thing that we're doing this year is Orlando, I think it was last year, they opened up the Innovation Center, which it used to be a Walgreens. That was pretty cool, walking into a Walgreens and it was an Innovation Center. And it's a blessing because they have different programs where students can actually discover what their passion is what is what it is that they want to do they have um programs where they become critical uh, it's called problem solving there's project-based learning but there's also problem solving which is they find a way to help um make the world a better place the united nations has i believe it's 17 um world problems 
and students get to be a part of that. Think about something, how they can maybe solve world hunger. Apart from other great programs, and so we're trying to plan a trip out to the Innovation Center in October so students can see what that's all about. So that's something amazing that we're, we're doing um, this year as well. Uh, we also have outdoor education at Cap Camp Kalakwa. Student, the older students are going to have an opportunity to go for outdoor education and see what that's all about. And lastly, I just want to close with, we would love you to be a part of our school. I, I, we would love for you to volunteer, whether it's coming into the class and doing something with the students, whether it's helping with fundraisers, anything and everything. We want you to know that you are a part of our school. And I want to thank you for all your prayers so far, so far for um, donations. I thank you so much. And keep us in your prayers because we want the school to grow, you know. And um, so keep praying for us. And at the end of church, at the end of the service, there is a sign-up sheet. And you can just put your name, email, and number. And just put what you want to volunteer for. And Mr. Roy and I, I will reach out to you. And it would be just wonderful to have you there to support and help grow this school. So thank you so much. And um, our program with the church will be for Christmas, so the kids are getting ready for that. So we will be presenting uh, in December. I believe it's Octo uh, December 14th, right? Uh, I think the, second. The, the second weekend, yes. So thank you so much. That's right. And we do want to take a moment here with, uh, with Tom and Fernanda like to have them up here we want to have a special prayer of dedication for them and uh, we have Kip here too one of our elders uh, Ben isn't here because his wife is in the hospital but uh, we just want to pray that God will bless them we are fortunate I want to tell you I've worked with a lot of different teachers over the years and um, I think these are some of the finest teachers that we have in our school they're excellent teachers uh, and I'm, I'm hearing lots of, you know, uh, Tom has just started this year, but I'm already hearing a lot of good uh, reports about how the kids love him and how he interacts with the kids. And I think he even has a competition now, something like uh, if they do certain things, you're going to shave your head or something like that. <laughs> Tell us about that to encourage my students to read more um, if they reach a goal of basically they would have to read 30 minutes a day five days a week and some of them are reading three hours because I want my head shaved <laughs> once we reach that goal whoever had the most reading gets to sh help me shave my head we will look forward to that we'll have to have a special a ceremony at church to, to recognize that event when it happens. The ordinance of humility. <laughs> yeah. The students were like, Miss Alves, you should do it too. And I'm like, Ooh. something else. <laughs> it reminds me, there's a pastor, he's now the ministerial director for, for our conference, uh, Orlando Lopez. And he used to be the youth pastor at the um, Winter Springs Church and they were doing a fundraising for their church and they wanted to raise a hundred thousand dollars within a certain amount of time and he said he wasn't gonna get a haircut until they raised the hundred thousand dollars and it took like uh, over a year for them to do that and then he said when we reach that goal we're gonna have a special ceremony in the church and we're gonna shave my head and I saw the, the video of that and they actually reached the goal and he came in there, and the, the, the head pastor and some of the elders and everything, they, had a, they had a, actually had a barber's uh, chair. On Did the, you say the head pastor? Yeah, 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 yeah. And they, they shaved his head. <laughs> so I don't know, maybe we could do that during church. I don't know, we'll, we'll think about it. <laughs> anyway, we are, and, and we do want to encourage you to get involved in the school. If there's any way you can get involved, we need your help in the school. Uh, we don't want people to think the school just kind of out there by itself and the church is over here. It's all one family. And I know they could appreciate having a, a few volunteers, uh, whatever. I heard somebody talking to you earlier today. Yes. So you got one to start with. So we're hoping there'll be some more. 
So just come over here together, close together, and uh, we just want to pray a special prayer of dedication on our teachers that the Lord will bless them through this year. And we're a little low on our students. Uh, we need a few more students, uh, but I feel that God's going to bless us. And if you know anybody at all, uh, I mean, when I say low, we're not, it's not super low, but it's lower than what we were hoping for. So if you know anybody that might be interested in the school, uh, be sure to tell Fernanda or steer them in our direction because uh, uh, we have a great school and people should be taking advantage of it. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for our school here in Coco. I think to my mind, it's a miracle school, how God provided the funds for our school to open. We had a great year last year uh, and you have sent us wonderful young people to be part of the school and we also sent us wonderful teachers uh, fernanda and tom lord we today want to lift them up to you we want to ask lord that uh, you anoint them with the holy spirit and that you uh, give them wisdom as they deal with these young people it's not easy always to deal with young people uh, but they are at the age where their characters are being formed and their life uh, values are being established. And Lord, we pray that you will bless each student and that you'll be with Fernanda and Tom too. May Jesus be seen through them. May his love be reflected in all that they do. And Lord, we pray that you give them strength, give them courage, help them to know as a church that we love them and help us not to be afraid to tell them we appreciate them and to reach out to them and show them support. It's not easy to be a teacher. And Lord, they need encouragement. They need support. They need all of us standing behind them. So Lord, bless them and help them and help them to know that this church loves them and loves our school. And may the school be more successful than ever. We're so glad to hear already some of the plans they have for this year. Continue to guide and direct. And uh, we know, Lord, that this school is going to continue to grow and thrive and be the lighthouse you want it to be. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Okay, now it's our children's story. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Sabbath, church. Happy Sabbath, girls. How are you today? You all look so lovely. I love the dresses. Beautiful. So I have a question for you. Who, who was here last week? You were here last week, right? Do you remember the story I told? Okay. So do you remember the girl's name in the story? Do you remember her name? It was about, I'll give you a hint, it starts with an L. Lisa, yes. Okay, so today's a continuation about Lisa. So Lisa, do you remember how old Lisa was? It's about seven years old, and Lisa had a teacher. Do you remember the teacher's name? It was Mrs. Smith. Okay, so last week we learned that Lisa had a special project and she gave out cards to do witnessing and those people came to church. Now, because of Lisa's witnessing, Mrs. Smith, who also went to Lisa's church, brought the idea up at her church. So they started to do the same. By witnessing, they would take their little cards that had Bible verses on them, and they would go out in the community, and they would share it with others. Now, Mrs. Smith loved to help kids. So she also had a huge farm. And who can name some animals that are on the farm? What's on the farm? Pig. Yes. Sheep. And a dog. Okay, dog. What goes? What's that? And it gallops and it has four legs. You can ride on it. What is it? Horse. Yes, she had lots of horses. Have you ever seen a horse before? 
Yes, they're big, but they're pretty. So she had horses and she would invite an instructor to come and she would have the children come by the farm and she would give horseback riding lessons. And the kids loved it, especially the fact that Mrs. Smith was so kind that she would invite other kids who were unfortunate you know they didn't have homes or sometimes they didn't have enough to eat she would invite them to come and she would provide them with food as well so when they go home now mrs smith was married to mr smith and mr smith he was known to be a grumpy man so when the kids would come over they'd be like hi mrs smith we love your farm oh my gosh can we drive to ride on your horses we love them yay and when Mr. Smith saw them coming, Mr. Smith would say, rawr, 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 rawr. kids have cooties. Rawr, 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 rawr. But the kids still loved Mr. Smith and, hi, Mr. Smith, can we ride your horses? We love the horses, we wanna ride the horses, yay! They would get so excited. But Mrs. Smith would always welcome them with open arms and hug them and be like, come on kids, let's get on the horses. And Mr. Smith would be like, what would he say? kids have cooties so days went on and mrs smith would always help the children she would spread the word of the lord by giving out her cards and the kids would help her now a few days went by and guess what the kids got some really really sad news they came into church and the pastor came up and the pastor said, church, we have some really sad news today. Mrs. Smith has passed away. Everyone was so sad. The kids cried, they couldn't believe it. Now, when they heard this news, they would try to bring over, you know, food and flowers over to Mr. Smith because you know, Mr. Smith ended up closing the farm. He didn't let anybody come in there. And sometimes they would leave food by the door and ring the bell. Mr. Smith, can you come out, Mr. Smith? And there was no answer. But sometimes in the evenings, when the kids would be playing outside, there was an area by the Smith house where they can see. And they would see Mr. Smith come out and he would sit down on the swing and he would watch the sunset and then he would go back inside. Now, the kids didn't give up. So one day they got together and they thought, hey, how can we cheer up Mr. Smith? He's so sad and he's so lonely now that Mrs. Smith isn't with us anymore. So Lisa, do you remember Lisa from the other story? Lisa said, guess what? I think we should pray. You know what Mrs. Smith used to say? With God, all things are possible. So they said, that's a great idea. So they all held hands and they said a prayer. They said, dear Lord, please help us uh, to have a good idea that Mr. Smith will come out and he will open up his farm and spend time with us. We may be small, but Lord, we know you are able. Amen. So now every day, they would go to Mr. Smith's house. They ring the bell. Mr. Smith, are you in there? And they saw some sort of movement, but nobody opened the door. So they left the card. And you know what the card was? Remember those cards what Mrs. Smith would leave with Bible verses? They would write Bible verses on it and they would leave it at the front. Then the next day happened. They rang the doorbell. Mr. Smith, are you in there? Knock, knock, knock. Still no answer but they would write a card and they would leave it at the front. But as they did that every day, they noticed the cards were disappearing. So they went again, knock, 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 and all of a sudden they saw the curtain move a little bit. And they saw Mr. Smith. Hi, Mr. Smith. We just wanted to say we love you and we left you another card. And they would go on their way. Now the next day came and guess what? Mr. Smith beat them outside. He was right there. And they were like, oh, hi, Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith looked down when he went like this. 
So Mr. Smith said, children, follow me. And the kids were surprised that Mr. Smith was talking to them. So they followed Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith opened the gate to where the horses were. And he went in there. He saddled up the horses. And he said, come on, children. And he put the kids on each horse. Then he took the horses and he went around and around and around. And then Lisa said to Mr. Smith, Mr. Smith, Mr. Smith said, yes. She said, we just want to tell you, thank you, and we love you. Mr. Smith looked down and he said, brr, brr, brr. and then the kid said, what did you say, Mr. Smith? I love you too. What was that, Mr. Smith? I love you too, children. And Mr. Smith took the horses and they went all around. And the kids were so happy to spend that little time with Mr. Smith. And as the sun went down, Mr. Smith said, okay, children, it's time to go. So the kids got off the horses. He locked up the horses, locked up the gate, but the kids were still there. So the kids said, Mr. Smith said, don't you guys have a place to go? And the kids said, Mr. Smith, they're gonna watch the sunset with you. That was nice. So they held Mr. Smith's hand. They went by the swing set, sat down. And Lisa looked at Mr. Smith and said, we miss her too. And a tear came down Mr. Smith's eyes. And Mr. Smith said, children, thank you for your cards. I read them every day. And Mrs. Smith would be so proud of you. So from that day, the kids were sure to always check on Mr. Smith. They would spend time and help him on his farm. Even when school came around, they would visit after school, ask him if he needed any help. And they would help him out clean the farm and spend time with him. They would pray with him. They did that till they got grown and went away to school. But guess what? They never forgot. And Mr. Smith went to each one of their graduations. So boys and girls, or girls I should say, and church, we must always remember to be kind to others, okay? And with God, all things are? Amen. All right, so who would like to pray? You pray? Nobody wants to pray? All right, I'll pray. All right, let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we want to thank you for your Sabbath day. We want to thank you for everything which you have done for us and given to us. Lord, help us to always be a witness for you and help us to remember no matter how small we are, we can do a big job for you. Also help us to remember we can do all things through you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, let's get our offering baskets.
Happy Sabbath, Church. It's now time for tithe and offering. In Malachi 3, verses 10, it says, Bring the full tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven for you, and pour, you, pour down for you an overflowing of blessing. Will the deacons come forward? Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for being here with us today. Thank you, Lord, for everything you have provided for us. Lord, as we try to give back to you, Lord, I pray that you will accept our giving. In Jesus' name, amen. so good to see everyone out there looking at me. This is your chance during corporate prayer to give to God our dear hearts. It's also time for you to communicate to us these Praise and prayer sheets. I got a prayer, a, a prayer request and a praise for God. I pray for my wife. She has pain in her, in her legs, her bone. She has been having that for a while. Let's pray for her. And I want to praise the Lord for my health. Uh, three months ago, I went to the doctor. Uh, I got my blood results and I had an A1C at 6.6. 6.4 and above is diabetes. So I had diabetes. And he said to me, you, I got to give you some, some medicine. I said, I don't want no medicine. I'm going to do my, on my own. So I exercised, eat right, took vitamins. This Monday, I went to the doctor. I got my bullet results back. It went down from 6.6 .6 to 5.9. Seven. Number seven. I love that number. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Any other praises? Well, I wanted to say we are going to be praying over these cards after church and then once again at prayer meeting. Let us uh, join us please at the foot of the cross.
Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for Jesus, that he can come into our hearts through your Holy Spirit. Your guidance has made all the difference in our lives. Your kindness makes us all a better person. We wish to communicate to you that we love you. And it's mainly because you loved us first. Lord, we are far from perfect. And yet, Christ says, be ye perfect, even as your heavenly Father is perfect. He offered this as a, a challenge to us. Lord, we look at these cards and we see people who are concerned. Please bless everyone that has written these cards. Also, please bless those people who are in these cards and have a need. You are so gracious. You are so powerful as to meet these needs. Lord, we are so thrilled that you can hear our voice. We pray your blessing be upon us and our loved ones. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading is taken from 1 Corinthians 12, verses 12 through 14. For as a body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. May God have a rich blessing to the reading of his word. At this time we'll have special music by Rosa.
Happy Sabbath. Thank you for that song. It is true. Life is worth the living because he lives. We uh, just want to mention something here before I get into my sermon. I forgot to mention this earlier. We had an incident here at the church uh, this last week where there was a homeless man. I came to church on Wednesday afternoon and there was a homeless man inside the church and apparently the door was left open to the church fortunately the man didn't hurt anything he didn't steal anything he didn't vandalize anything um, I think he might have had a few mental issues he found our our study sheets for the great controversy you know that we had a few uh, years ago when we studied the book The Great Controversy and he was writing furiously all kinds of what he thought were answers to the questions 
And uh, when he left, he had a pile of papers about yay high. So we're very thankful that nothing bad happened as a result of him being here. Uh, but I just want to mention, just want to remind everybody, when you leave the church or the gym or anywhere else in this church campus, make sure you lock the door. Because when he came, he said, I knocked at the door and nobody answered. So I tried the door handle and it was open. And so I figured, well, I might as well come in and make myself at home. So anyway, just make sure, let's all uh, be vigilant, let's all be careful that when we're done doing whatever we do at the church, we finish our business here, we lock the door and make sure that everything is secure. Because that could have turned out a lot worse if that man was inclined to steal things or vandalize things or cause a problem. It could have been a major issue. But fortunately, uh, he was quite harmless. And, uh, and uh, in fact, I did invite him to come to church today. I don't see him here today. But anyway, uh, hopefully he can get some help that he needs. I offered some help to him, actually some agencies I knew about, but he wasn't interested in, in going there. All right, let's just bow our heads for a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for the privilege we have of coming together to open your word today. We pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart will be acceptable in your sight and that you will anoint me with your Holy Spirit and that everything that we say and do here will help us to be better followers of you and help our church to be stronger in its mission to do your work. In Jesus' name, amen. A few weeks ago, uh, I preached a sermon about uh, the fruits of the Spirit. Do anybody remember that sermon? A while back, we talked about the fruits of the Spirit. And uh, we mentioned that there are two... Um, two manifestations of the Holy Spirit that God wants to see in all of us. One of them is the fruits of the Spirit. And the other one is the gifts of the Spirit. Now we know that, uh, as we mentioned in that sermon, the fruit of the Spirit is different than the gifts of the Spirit. In fact, the fruit of the Spirit are more like characteristics uh, reflections of God in our lives. And God wants us all to have all of the fruits of the Spirit. There are things like love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, kindness, meekness. And, and so those things we, we can't say, well, I'm going to choose to have love as the fruit of the Spirit, but I am not going to have patience. You know, patience just isn't my thing. Or I'm going to choose to be full of joy but I'm not going to be kind. You know, that's not the way it works. God wants us to have every one of the fruits of the Spirit. Amen? Amen? But there is also the gifts of the Spirit. And while we are to have every one of us manifest the fruit of the Spirit, we don't all have the same gifts of the Spirit. God has given us different gifts. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that today. You know, there's gifts of teaching and healing and preaching and, and uh, there's the gift of administration and evangelism and, and apostleship and uh, hospitality and all of those are gifts. Now, we don't all have the same gifts. We all have the same fruit, but we don't all have the same gifts. Uh, and God chooses what gifts we're going to have. And we look at the life of Jesus... Jesus is probably the only person who had all the fruit of the Spirit, but he also had all the gifts of the Spirit. And he, when he was baptized, Jesus received the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit was poured out upon him and manifested the fruits and then later on the gifts. We might say that Jesus was the ultimate man. Some people might say he was even like the ultimate superhero. 
You know, the superheroes that we read about and we have the different uh, uh, superhero movies and so forth, they had special powers. They had x-ray vision, supernatural strength, power uh, to, uh, fi to fly, bulletproof bodies. I remember when I was a kid, I w used to watch the, the series Superman. And I always thought it was cool that they would shoot bullets at Superman and they just all bounce off of him. Nothing could hurt him. No matter where he did, wherever he went, you know, he was a superhero. And just like the superheroes that we read about in the comic books, Jesus had many superhero powers too. Jesus had the ability to heal people, to raise people from the dead. He did many wonderful things when he was on this earth. You know, Jesus came to show the world what God was like. He came to reveal to the world the character of God. He lived a life of service and he offered salvation to everyone around him. He came and helped the underdogs. He helped the downcast. He helped the suffering. He helped the hopeless. And Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit when he was baptized. And God also wants us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. In fact, when we're baptized, I believe God wants to pour out the Spirit on us. And so Jesus was great at, able to do a great many things through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And every day when Jesus got up, he would ask for the Holy Spirit to enter into his life. He would pray for the Holy Spirit. He would pray that God would use him. He would pray that God would give him those special abilities, those special gifts that he needed to carry out God's uh, plan for his life. And he was completely submitted to the Holy Spirit for everything that he did. You know, um, I don't know about you, but how many of us today that are here, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand or anything, prayed for the Holy Spirit this morning when you got out of bed? Did you pray for the Holy Spirit? Did you ask the Lord to give you the Holy Spirit so you could do his work? So you could be like Jesus? When you came to church, they would feel the Spirit of Christ and not the spirit of Satan. You know, there's two spirits in the world. Spirit of Christ and the spirit of Satan. And we're either manifesting one or the other. We got to be careful that we're not manifesting the wrong one. Because what the world needs is to see the God. They need to see the spirit of God, to see the character of God, to see the love of God, the joy, the peace, the, the patience, the long suffering of God. And we need to be praying for that every day. What do you think? And so Jesus manifested that. You notice Galatians 5 verses 20, 22 and 23. We looked at this when we talked about the gifts of the Spirit. I mean the, the fruit of the Spirit. We're not going to belabor that too much today. But uh, we want to look at Galatians 2, uh, 5, 22 and 23. It says the fruit of the Spirit... Our love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are in Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires, so that we will, if we live by the Spirit, we should also walk in the Spirit. And then it goes on to say, let us not uh, become conceited. It's interesting. Conceited, that means puffed up provoking one another, but let us edify one another. We edify each other with the fruit of the Spirit. And so all these fruit, I like to say they are all based on love. Every fruit of the Spirit is a manifestation of love. You know, if you have love in your heart, you're going to be at peace with everybody. You're not going to go around fighting with people. If you have love in your heart, you're going to have joy in your heart, right? If, you're gonna, if you have love in your heart, you're going to be patient. If somebody says something that ticks you off, you're not going to curse them out. Or if somebody is at the stoplight and they wait two seconds after it changes to green, you're not going to lay on your horn. I find even in Titusville that's starting to happen now. Somehow or another, I think Orlando is in, invading the space course, coast here. Uh, that's not a... And that's, there's some good things about Orlando, but that's not one of the good ones we want to see come here. Anyway, you know, you're going to be kind. You're going to be humble. 
And I go, you go bragging about how great you are everywhere you go. You're going to manifest the fruit of the Spirit. And if we look at Jesus, Jesus manifested the fruit of the Spirit. You know, Jesus loved everybody. In fact, he even said, greater love has no man, but he give up his life for his friend. Jesus says, I love you so much, I'm willing to go to the cross for you. Amen? And Jesus was full of joy. In fact, Jesus said when he was on this earth, I have come so that your joy may be full. If you want to have joy in your life, get to know Jesus. And Jesus will bring you joy. And he also said, he, he also came to bring peace. He said, peace I live with you, leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Jesus wants to share his peace with us. Everywhere he went, he was encouraging people to live in peace. He also was patient. Can you think of anybody that Jesus was patient with? What about those disciples that were always fighting with each other, always squabbling with each other? But Jesus had patience with them. He kept praying for them. He was patient with the leaders. He was patient with, with, with the people that were sinners. Jesus had patience. And Jesus was kind. I remember how Jesus, it mentions that when the mothers brought their children to be blessed by Jesus, uh, at first Jesus, the disciple says, no, 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 he's too busy. He doesn't have time for that. He's, he's a busy man. He's got to go out and preach some more sermons. He's got to do other things. But what did Jesus say? Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of heaven. He took those children up into his arms. He was kind. He was gentle. He loved people. He was kind to the sinners. He was kind to the paralytics. He was kind to the Samaritans. He was kind to the Gentiles. Jesus wasn't prejudiced against anybody. He manifested the fruit of kindness. He also was full of goodness. He stood up for what was right. He stood up for the truth. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And he had faith. He was full of faithfulness in all that he did. And you know all else? He was full of meekness. Bible says, Jesus said one time, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Learn of me, because I am meek and lowly of heart. He had the fruit of meekness. And he also had the fruit of self-control. You know, when they were nailing him to the cross, did he start cursing out those soldiers and saying, stop that, that hurts. When they were spitting on him, when they were hitting him, Jesus went like a lamb to the slaughter. He had self-control. And he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Every fruit of the Spirit was manifested in the life of Jesus. But not only that, Jesus manifested the gifts of the Spirit. As we read earlier for our scripture reading, it says that God wants to give us gifts, not just fruit, but gifts. Gifts to help us to be able to do his work while we are here on this earth. You notice over there again in Ephesians, we're going to look at Ephesians chapter 4 there. You have your Bibles with you. Get out your Bibles, Ephesians chapter 4. Uh, it says here, uh, beginning with verse 8, it talks about Jesus going back to his Father. And it says, when he had ascended on high, he led captivity captive, and he gave gifts unto man. He ascended unto heaven, uh, to earth. And, and then later on in verse 11, it says he gave to some apostles, to some prophets, to some evangelists, to some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for doing the work of ministry, for building up uh, the church, the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. 
Jesus had all of these gifts. You know, it's interesting to think about Jesus. Not all of us are apostles. But in Hebrews 3.1, it says Jesus was the chief apostle. He was the chief of all the apostles. And then it, it says again, not all of us are prophets, but it also says that Jesus was the greatest prophet. In fact, Moses said, there's going to come a prophet after me that's going to be like me, that's going to do the same works that I did. And that prophet was Jesus. He was the greatest evangelist. Jesus went out preaching the gospel everywhere, uh, calling people to repentance, calling them to be baptized, and, and telling them the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus was a great evangelist. Jesus was a great teacher. In fact, they said, never was there anybody who taught like Jesus did. He had the gift of teaching. He also had the gift of serving. What did he do? We just celebrated this a few weeks ago. What did Jesus do with the disciples when he was in the upper room before they had the Lord's Supper? He knelt down and he washed their feet. He was saying, uh, I, your master, your rabbi, rabbi, I am also your servant. I'm willing to wash your feet. I'm willing to humble myself. So you will know that God is not a vindictive God, but God is up there to help you, to bless you, and to serve you. And he also was the all-wise God. Notice what it says over there in Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter uh, 2. And... Uh, Talking about Jesus when he, the incarnation, when he came to this earth to be among us. Notice Colossians chapter 2 and verses 2 and 3. It says, we give thanks God, excuse me, he says, but after that, uh, I'm sorry, somehow I got to Thessalonians. I just skipped right over Colossians, poor Colossians. All right, Colossians 2, 2 and 3. You know what it says? Uh, it says, Their hearts being knit together in love, attaining all the riches of the full assurance of the understanding of the knowledge of the mystery of God, both the Father and Christ, in whom all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are manifested. It says here that all wisdom was manifested through Christ. All knowledge was manifested through Christ. And you know, God, He was merciful too. He had the gift of mercy. I'm so glad that Jesus is merciful to me, aren't you? I'm so glad he's willing to forgive my sins. And he had the gift of healing. Everywhere Jesus went, he was healing people. He healed the eyes of the blind. He caused the deaf to hear. He cleansed the lepers. He cast out the demons. He caused the lamb, lame to walk. He raised the paralytics up from their uh, 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 mats where they were unable to move. He was a great pastor. He loved people. He com had compassion. He went showing care wherever he went. And so Jesus manifested not only all the fruits, but he manifested all the gifts. In fact, I would say that Jesus is the only person that actually had all the gifts. None of us have all the gifts. We're supposed to have all the fruit, but we don't have all the gifts. And so we need... Uh, you know, Jesus came to this earth and he gave a perfect picture of God through his life. Through his, the fruit of the Spirit, through the gifts of the Spirit, he showed the world exactly what God was like. But there was a problem. There was a problem with Jesus. You know, that sounds strange to say there's a problem with Jesus. But the problem with Jesus is he was just one person. And he could only be at one place at a time. And his whole ministry was spent in Palestine, in Judea. He never went to Europe. He never went to Africa. He never came to America. He never went to China. He never went to Asia. He never went to the Middle East. Jesus only stayed in a very small part of the world. And very few people considering the overall population of the world, were able to interact with him. And so Jesus says, I've got to have a plan. The whole world needs to know what God is like. 
Not just the people, not just the Jews, not just the Samaritans, not the people where I live. The whole world needs to know what I'm like. And so you know what Jesus did? Who can tell me what Jesus did to help the whole world know what Jesus is like, what the world is like? Pardon me? He had disciples. Yes, excellent, excellent. He had the 12 disciples. And one day when he was talking to the disciples, uh, you know, uh, Peter said, you're the Messiah, you're the great Messiah. And Jesus said, heaven, you know, uh, man, flesh is not revealed to you, but heaven is revealed to you that. He says, uh, and upon this rock, upon you people, you disciples, you disciples, I'm going to build my church. The disciples were chosen to be the founders of what? The church. God established the church to manifest the fruits of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. We're going to look at this a little bit today in depth. You notice it says there in Ephesians chapter 1, 22 and 23, if you have your Bibles, what did it say there about Jesus? 1, 22 and 23. It says, and he put all things under his foot and he was given to be the head over all things, even the church. All right. Which is his body. Now just stop right there. Jesus is the head of the church. And the church is his what? Body. Now we think about the church being Christ's body. There's a lot of different ways of looking at that. One way of looking at it is. If it's his body, what's it going to be like? What's, when people come to church, who should they see? How should they feel in the church? Jesus. Because the church is Christ's body. Amen? All right? And also, he's the head, and the church is connected to him. So where does the church get its power and its strength and its direction from? Who's Who's in charge of directing the church? Pastor Schiffbauer? All right, Pastor Ruiz? No, it's who? Jesus. Jesus is the head. I think sometimes we forget that. And sometimes we might even think, I'm the head. The church should do everything the way I want it to do. They should obey me they should they should i should have my own way in everything that the church does is that right no who should the church be looking to jesus it says he is the head of all things even the church which is his body the fullness of him now listen this is this is again very interest the church is supposed to be the fullness of christ the fullness of christ what does that mean that means all of those fruit of the Spirit should be manifested where? In the church. All the gifts that we were just talking about, the healing, the teaching, the preaching, the evangelizing, all that stuff. Who's supposed to be doing that now? The church. The church. That's right. You notice a little later on in the book of Ephesians, uh, Paul talks, he compares the relationship between Christ and the church with a relationship between a husband and a wife. And you notice there in, in verse uh, 23, for example, uh, it says there, uh, for the husband is the head of the wife. You know, some wives don't always like that idea, but I didn't write it, the Bible did. As also Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be subject to their husbands. The point here is that Jesus is in charge of the church, just like we were saying earlier. And we think about a marriage. You think about a marriage. It's interesting. People who really love each other, they really love, they really like to be with each other, right? They like to spend, you know, if you're, if you're married, and we have a few newlyweds here in our church, if you really love your spouse, you like to be with them, right? You like to do things with them. 
I see one of these newlyweds shaking her head at me. I'm not sure how to take that. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, ideally, you would like to be with your husband and your wife. And not only that, but as people are married for a while, they become more and more like each other. Have you ever noticed that? You know, they say, he can finish my sentence, or she can finish my sentence. And, and, you, and, and you look, at, I, I've known a number of older couples that were married like 40, 50 years. And they, they start to actually act like each other. You know, they, they have the same hand gestures. Uh, they, they have the same vocabulary. And, and uh, uh, you know, they become more and more like each other. In fact, they even walk like each other. I remember this one couple I knew you'd see them walking down the street and they've had the same gait, the way they, they walk together. Because they've been together so long. And you see, that's what God wants to happen with us in Jesus. He wants us to talk like Jesus. He wants us to think like Jesus. He wants us to be able to finish our sentences like Jesus would finish them. He wants us to walk like Jesus. He wants, when people see us, they're reminded of Jesus, you see. And so, that's why he says as a, as a Wife is subject to Christ, so the church should be subject to Christ. To, uh, as a wife is subject to her husband, excuse me. The church is to be subject to Christ. And husbands, love your wife, just like Jesus loved the church. You know, we talk a lot about wives being subject to their husbands. But sometimes we husbands, we want to live out that part where it says, you know, be willing to die for your wife. You know, if, if I, I think most women that are here, that are married to here today, if, if you had a husband that you knew, no matter what happened, he would die for you. If there was a car coming out in the middle of the road and you were there, he would dive out there and push you out of the way. And he would take the blow. He'd get your back if somebody was talking mean about you. He'd put them in their place. You see, that's the kind of husbands we should be. And that's the way Jesus is with us. Jesus stands up for us. Jesus protects us. Jesus takes care of us. In fact, the church is the thing that is most valuable to Christ in the whole world. And later on, it says in this chapter, and I'm going to read it to you. It says here, it says here, so husbands ought to, uh, let me read a little bit ahead of that. It says, Jesus so loved the church that he gave himself that he might sanctify the church and wash it with water in the word that he might present her as to himself a glorious church, not having a spot or wrinkle or any such things that she should be holy without blemish. And so husbands ought to love their wives. He who loves his wife loves himself. No one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes it and cherishes it just as Christ does the church. Jesus died for the church, my friends. You know, that's something we need to think about. Jesus died for the church. Let's think about that for a minute. We say, oh, well, Jesus died for me. I don't know about the church. There's a lot of bad people in the church. There's a lot of hypocrites in the church. There's a lot of false Christians in the church. You mean Jesus died for them? No. Yes, he did. It says in the Bible, Jesus died for the church. He died so that he could have a church that was without spot or wrinkle. A church that would represent him to the world. Yes, he died for you. Yes, he died for me. But he died for this congregation. He died for the Coco Church. So that the Coco Church can be successful. So the Coco Church can do his, world, uh, his will and do his work. Jesus died for the church. And he wants us, his longing is, that we can share his love with each other. You know, I'm going to stretch this out a little bit more here. You see, we need, we need the fruit of the Spirit in the church. Now, you know, we need the fruit of the Spirit in the world, too. So that when we go out into the world, people need to feel the love of God, the peace, of, the joy of Jesus, the, the mercy of God, the forgiveness of God. We need all of those things in the church, in, in, the, in the church. But we also need those fruits to show to each other. Have you ever thought of that? We should have the fruit of the Spirit 
so that people will feel love from me, that you'll feel love from me when I come to church. We need to ask ourselves, do I show the fruit of the Spirit to other people in the church? Do they feel like I'm a merciful person? Am I gentle in the way I speak? Am I kind? Am I humble? And then you show it to me. And when you show the love of God to me, how does that make me feel? And when you show, when you encourage me and you say, Pastor Dan, it's a wonderful day. I got out of bed this morning and I'm full of the joy of Jesus. Do you ever say that to anybody at church? God wants us to. We need to. And we also need those gifts in the church. We still need the gifts of the church as well. The gift of encouragement. The gift of, of um, faithfulness. The gift of service. The gift of hospitality. They're needed to be shown to each other in the church as well. It's First Corinthians talks about, but the thing is we don't all have the same gifts. We don't all have the same gifts. And that's part of the reason why we need the church. You see, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it says the church is made up of many different parts. There's hands, there's eyes, just like a body has many parts. There's hands, there's eyes, there's feet, there's ears, there's a mouth. Now, a body isn't made up of just one body part. What would it look like if somebody came in to our church and they were nothing but a big eyeball? You'd say, wow, Halloween came early. Or they were nothing but a big ear. Or their whole body was covered with arms and hands. And they didn't have a head. You see, there's all different kinds of parts and all different kinds of gifts and all different kinds of abilities in the church. Some are hands. Some are feet. Some are eyes, they have discernment, they have wisdom. Some are ears, they're good at listening to other people and encouraging them. Some have mouths where they can praise God and preach the gospel. God has given us all different manifestations of Him. And this is the thing about the church, my friend. None of us have all the gifts. None of us have all the different parts that we need. But when we all come together, we all working together as a team, as a uh, body of Christ, we all show those different parts and gifts and fruits of Christ. Do you understand what I'm saying? Some of us are healers. Some of us are preachers. Some of us are, you know, people of service. We like to be hospitable. Some of us like to work in the kitchen. Some of us like to do yard work. Some of us like to do other things. We like to visit people. We like to pray for people. We like to encourage people. And so when we all work together, all of us work together, what are we all together? When we're all working together, we are what? The body of the Christ. Now follow me through on this. That means in order for Jesus to be manifested to the world, Jesus needs a whole what? A whole body. And he needs each of us as part of that body because we're all showing a little piece of Jesus. You understand? It's like a mosaic. You may show the, the faith of Jesus. Somebody else may show the wisdom of Jesus. And when we all come together in the church, we all show, when we all work together, the church as a whole totality shows the world Jesus. That's why I have to belong to the church. Because I can't do it by myself. I'm not able to show the, the world everything about Jesus. But when you're out there on the team with me, you're showing part of Jesus that's a different part of Jesus than I'm showing. And somebody else is showing a different part of Jesus than what your neighbor in the pew is showing. And so when we all get out there, the whole body of everybody working together manifests Christ to the world. And you know what? If somebody's missing, what happens to the body of Christ? It's like 
an eyeball is missing or a hand is missing. And so the whole picture of Jesus isn't going to come through as clearly. You see, if you're not involved in the church, if you're not doing your part, if you're not using your gift, if you're not showing the fruit of the Spirit, then there's going to be a lack. And maybe things will be distorted. And you know, it, it hurts us all. And I'm just going to, we're getting near the end here. It hurts us all. It hurts us all. When somebody's missing, when somebody drops out of church, when somebody's not here anymore, it hurts the whole body. You know what I'm saying? So if I, if something went wrong with my hand, maybe I got a, a cut in it, and it got infected, and they tried to heal it, and they tried to do what they could, but eventually they said, oh, gangrene is setting in there, so we're going to have to amputate it. Is my body going to suffer because of that? It might survive. It might live on. Of course, there's certain things you can't cut off uh, that you won't survive. If you cut off the head, not much hope for that. That's why we have to keep connected with Christ. If we cut off ourselves off from Christ, not, not good, not good. So, but the body's going to suffer. If we know of somebody that's not in church, we know of somebody who's been hurt or somebody who hasn't been treated right, what should we do? We need to reach out to that person because they're part of us. And we're all going to suffer if that person isn't restored the way they should be. You understand what I'm saying? We've got to be careful how we treat each other because we can wound each other. You know, people, there's, there's people that have mental problems that cut themselves. You know? We don't want to be a church that cuts itself. We need to analyze. How do I speak to each other? All the things I say. Am I speaking kindly? When I speak about things in the, in the church, in the school, other things. Am I, am I speaking encouraging words? Or am I cutting the body? Am I hurting the body? Jesus, Jesus wants a united body. He wants a body where we all love each other, where we all care about each other, where we all grow together, we all help each other get strong, and also where we are all moving together in the same direction. The vision that Jesus has for the church is that until he comes, it will continue to be his representative on this earth. No, Jesus isn't on this earth anymore. He went back to heaven 2,000 years ago. But we are Jesus now. The church is Jesus now. We are the place where people can come and hear the words of Jesus and be encouraged by Jesus. And throughout the centuries, the church has been there to show the world what Jesus is like. In the time of the apostles, in the Middle Ages, in the time even when the church strayed away from God, there was always a group of people that was still the body of Christ, that was still showing Jesus to the world. You know what? He still needs it today as well. He still needs a church, a remnant, a body of Christ that's without spot or wrinkle, a body of Christ that's going to show the world that Jesus is coming soon. A body of Christ that's going to proclaim the message of Christ to everyone. Jesus can't do that anymore. It's up to who? It's up to us. His church. Let's be the hands and the feet of Jesus. Let's show you doing your little piece of Jesus. Me doing my little piece of Jesus. You know... Joyce doing her little piece of Jesus. Linda doing her little piece of Jesus. So that when we're all combined together, just like an orchestra, there's a beautiful melody that comes out. You know, an orchestra, uh, one person playing in the orchestra cannot play a whole symphony. One violinist can't play the whole symphony. One flutist can't play the whole symphony. One 
you know, trumpetists can't play the whole symphony. The, to have a symphony, I'm into symphonies. To have a symphony, you got to have all the instruments playing together. And when they play together, they make a beautiful melody. They make a beautiful, forceful impact that just one of them wouldn't be able to do by themselves. We are the symphony of God. We need to work together to show the world the beautiful music of God's love. Somebody says, how do I know what my gifts are? Well, we'll talk about that maybe in another sermon. But you know, God will show you your gifts. Pray about it. Ask him to lead you. Sometimes it comes through other people. They might ask you to do something. Sometimes we're reluctant to do things. We're afraid to get up in front of people or whatever. We might surprise ourselves sometimes what we can do if we just put our, our trust in the Lord and ask him to help us. So God is looking for us, all doing our part to share his love and his symphony of love with the world. Who wants to say, I want Jesus to use me I want him to use me. I don't have all the gifts. There's a lot of things I don't know how to do. But Jesus helped me use what I do know how to do. And maybe that can combine with some other people. And we can go out and we can show the whole world a perfect picture of Christ. Let us close by singing the um, closing hymn. I would be like Jesus. That's the goal of the church, my friends. To be like Jesus. To show the world what Jesus is like. Will the congregation please stand?
Father in heaven, that's what we want. We want to be like Jesus. We want our church to be like Jesus. Yes, indeed, it was true. Jesus left this earth 2,000 years ago. But Jesus has still been here these last 2,000 years. He's been here in the, in the form of his people. He's been here in the body of the church. He's been here in the lives of his believers. Jesus has still been here every century. Jesus has been here shining forth from the congregations of the churches shining forth from the work of the ministers and the work of the believers Jesus has been here and he is still here today and he wants to be part he wants to manifest himself through the church in Coco he wants to manifest himself through each of our lives each of us working together showing a little piece of Jesus some of us his hands some of us his eyes some of us his ears some of us his heart some of us his feet some of us showing forth to the world his love and his grace manifesting his gifts manifesting his fruit Lord may Jesus may we be like Jesus so that when people walk into this church they said I really was blessed by being there because I met Jesus when I came to church today bless us and guide us now bless the food we're going to eat help us to have a good day Help us to nourish and comfort and encourage and nurture one another just like you love us. May we be people of encouragement, not people of discouragement. May we be people that uplift and not tear down. May the church truly show what Jesus is like and people will know that Jesus is still here among us. In Jesus' name, amen. God be with you till we meet again. By his counsels, God uphold you. With his sheep, thank you. Till we meet again. Till we meet.